I love you, Senator Bato, but I am against the ROTC bill. So we talk about education sa aking, in my humble <coughs> view. Pag binuhos natin yung energy for every single Filipino youth to understand the Sustainable Development Goals, if they live in the mountains, if they live by the river, bahala silang alagaan yun. Instead of marching, instead of uh, making a mandatory ROTC law, for me, Yan yung future natin. Yan yung future na kailangan natin to be prepared for. Because in as much as I'm all for the safety of our country, no? na siyempre ayoko naman ma-invade tayo either an alien species or another neighboring country, but ang ikamamatay siguro po natin, Your Honor, and this is where I will end my, my intervention, baka ang ikamamatay natin is lack of clean water. Lack of air that we can breathe na hindi naman ikamamatay ng mga senior citizens natin. Lack of sustainable, nutritious food. Yan malamang ang ikamamatay natin. And that is why I agree with her honor. And if she can just give a quick uh, response to this statement that I made, um, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity to uh, ask some questions and share my insights. Thank you so much. In answer to your question about loss and damage, uh, simply put, loss and damage, uh, Mr. President, are the consequences of climate change beyond adaptation. This could be <clears throat> um, economic or non-economic. Ito po yung mga, uh, kung hindi na iba yung mitigation, yung pagbabawas, iba yung pag adapt ibig sabihin, inaakma natin buhay, ang loss and damage, ito po yung mga responsibilidad ng mga bansang uh, nagsanhi lahat ito. Itong share line na binanggit po natin, example po, uh, itong share line na nagaganap sa Mindanao. Sa DA pa lang, may 200, 315 million na na losses at higit sa 10,000 isang daan ang ating mga magsasaka. Sa infra, 262 million uh, na ang mga naapektuhan dito at 52 ang namatay. Uh, wala pa silang report sa ecosystems na damage. Tama po kayo yung Sustainable Development Goals. If we take it seriously and take it to heart. Uh, alam nyo po, nung chairman ako ng finance, uh, you were congressman, I think, at the time. Yes. I placed it in the overarching provisions in the GAA that our whole GAA must be aligned with the SDGs. Yes. What year was that? I think for two or Mga three years. 2016, 2017. 2016. That's yes. In the House. And we continue it here. Thank A you very for good. that, Your Yes, Honor. I'm so glad. So, you're correct. Kung seryosohin natin, hindi lamang sa DENR or Climate Change Commission. Tama kayo sa health, sa edukasyon, sa lahat ng ahensya ang gobyerno, ay siguro ay maaagapa natin ang krisis ng klima, pag-akma ang ating pamumuhay at pagbibigay ng budget sa mga ahensya ng gobyerno alinsunod sa Sustainable Development Goals. Kaya maganda sigurong gawin ng ating sekretariat, may mongkahi po ako, sa bawat SDG, ilagay natin ang epekto sa climate crisis. I-marry natin bawat SDG. Let's say, the climate crisis sa health. O, itong SDG 1, SDG 2, yung epekto nito at anong solusyon o anong batas ang existing na sa Pilipinas, anong programa ng gobyerno ang nag address I'll say it in English, uh, perhaps it's faster. So, we will align the SDGs with the aspects of the climate crisis taking into consideration all existing laws or proposed legislation and programs of government which are already addressing the specific SDG which is uh, not complied with because of the climate crisis. If there is lacking legislation or policy or funding that is missing, uh, then we can address it. So we can have a matrix of the SDG vis-a-vis -vis climate crisis, vis-a-vis -vis policy legislation and budgeting. I agree wholeheartedly, yes. but if I may just add, uh, what I realized in the last few years also, it, in addition to what Her Honor has said, is that we review our laws and even the bills that are still pending to ensure that they are aligned. Because sadly, Your Honor, there are bills that are pending. There are laws that we have passed that may have, definitely, obviously, may purpose yun, ano? May purpose po yun. Pero it is possible na hindi 
sustainable yung plano na yon, Your Honor. So again, mabanggitin ko yung favorite example ko, ang e-cigs and vapes. Sabi daw, uh, alternative to smoking. And yet, we get it from the experts, there is not sufficient evidence to say that that is a proper alternative. So stop promoting it, especially with the youth, dahil kung hindi naman safe, edi may bagong addiction na naman tayo, di ba? So yun naman yung point ko, Your Honor, na it is even more difficult to be able to look at the laws we've passed and say, ah, not so aligned. What can we do to amend this so that we are more aligned? Because otherwise, Your Honor will agree that we are siphoning funding that could be going to saving lives and putting it in places where it is not really, not need, sometimes not needed at all or not as not efficient use of our funds. So I agree, dadagdagan ko pa nga noon na parang, so on my part, Your Honor, I can commit to our colleagues that I try to look at every bill that we are uh, discussing through the lens of sustainability. Para naman may contribution tayo to sustainability. Kasi nga baka may particular goal na hinahabol, pero hindi siya sustainable. I'll give you an example, Your Honor, and uh, our chairman of the Committee of Energy uh, um, addressed my concern in the last uh, uh, Congress when I brought this up. Um, Nagpupush tayo ng uh, energy efficient vehicles. Pero may situation in the, in the Philippines na in our desire to push for energy efficient vehicles, hindi naman dumaan sa proseso itong ibang vehicles na kumuha ng franchise. Ang nangyari, nakadagdag ng isang katutak na traffic na taking away valuable time of people's lives, quality of life na dagdag sa traffic because uh, may dagdag na public ve vehicles na hindi naman kumuha ng franchise. So my point, Your Honor, is if we continue to work together, we can ensure that our bills and the laws that we pass are more sustainable. Yun lang naman yung point ko, Your Honor. I'm so glad. Uh, I am ever grateful. Uh, thank you for bringing this to our attention. And yes, all the actions we take must be aligned with the, S with the SDGs, even if the SDGs will expire in 2030. Uh, in 2030. Seven years. Uh, within seven years, and we have not even reached our targets. And let me just state, Mr. President, siguro pagkatapos po ng sustainable development goals, in fact, dapat ngayon, hindi ba dapat restorative? Kasi ang sustainable, sinusustain lang natin. Pero kung restorative ang attitude natin, gusto natin uh, i-restore mula sa kanyang panimula. Ibig sabihin, kung nasira, hindi lang natin sustaining it is, you know, the way it is now. O yan, wag mong abusuhin. But restoring it is even going uh, one step further. But that's for the United Nations to decide. It's something that came across my mind because we want to leave this world in a better place than when we found it. We don't just want to leave it and sustain it. Leave it, oh, ganyan na. Pagandahin pa natin. Of course. Kaya, uh, ako po'y natutuwa at uh, gagawa po ako ng resolusyon. Sana mag-co-author kayo yung aking mungkahi <coughs> ng bawat sustainable development goal. How has it become seemingly unattainable because of the climate crisis? And how has the Philippines responded by legislation or by budgetary allocation if we have done it? Um, that is something which perhaps the LBRMO um, and the Secretariat, Attorney Garcia and everyone, uh, Depsec Belen, can help us with.